Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I will tell you all about this lovely trilogy right here which has many names but mostly it is known as either the Crucial Star Trilogy or Phaedrus Trilogy because the reason why it's also known as Crucial Star Trilogy is because there is a second trilogy that also has its book title start with Crucial and so sometimes the Crucial Star series refers to both trilogies but this one being Phaedrus Trilogy, this one being Imriel's Trilogy named after the main characters. There's also a third trilogy within the same world but those titles don't start with Crucial so they're not like Crucial trilogies. Uh, however, sometimes Crucial Start just refers to this one trilogy and today we're just going to talk about this one trilogy because I have not read the second one yet. So this trilogy I first read when I was between 18 and 19 years old and then I reread it this year on the one hand so I can do a review on it, on the other hand to prepare to continue on with the books within the series. And the first trilogy consists of three books, as trilogies are wont to do, starting with Kushiel's Start, the second book being Kushiel's Chosen, and the third book being Kushiel's Avatar. Now before we get into my review, as always my review is spoiler free, so if you have not read the series, this is the review for you. I will start with a little summary, then get into my more negative thoughts on the series, ending with the positive stuff. And with all of that said, let's get started. So the Kushiel Star Trilogy is set within a world that very much is modeled after our world. I'll get to that a little bit later on. And it is mostly set in a country that very much appreciates beauty in all the many forms that it shows itself in. Together with beauty, sensuality in all its forms also plays a very big role within the society. And as such you have these houses, these institutions called, I believe, the night courts, if I remember correctly correctly, that are basically houses catering to different sexual interests and to different sexual, um, not appreciations, but preferences. And the women and men who live in those houses cater to those preferences. We follow a main character named Phaedra who grows up in one of those houses. However, one day her, like, bond, her indentured bond, is bought by a man named Anafiel Delaney. And he is a politician, he is loyal to the crown and he takes her in and buys teachers for her who teach her a lot of things. On the one hand, how to, you know, pleasure people because that is what she is destined to be as someone who has grown up in one of the night houses in one of the night courts but he also teaches her a lot about politics and he teaches her how to be a spy and so Phaedra becomes basically his eyes and ears in the bedrooms of the country she becomes a courtesan spy and through that she also becomes very embroiled in the politics of her country which ends up being not the best for her to be honest and that's all i want to say about the series about the setup of the series so now let's get into my thoughts and the first thing the main negative thing i would say that i have about this series is that it does have this thing that a lot of older fantasy series have i mean this is still considered modern fantasy. It was written in 2000, 2001 or published in 2001 I believe, but it has what a lot of fantasy from the time also have and that is certain orientalist tropes. This series is, as I said, very much based on our world. Let's see if I can find the map. Yeah, see, that's uh, very obviously Great Britain. Our main country is very obviously France. Um, over there we have Scandinavia and in later books we do also travel to countries that are modeled after Persia, that are modeled after African countries and when we talk about those countries there are certain orientalist aspects to the way those countries and its people are described. The same thing also goes for 
a group of people, an ethnic group of people that very much is modeled after the Roma. So, you know, you do have that and I believe they are called something which I have heard somewhere that that might be an Eastern European slur for the Roma. So yeah, just be aware of that, that in terms of, you know, depicting non-Europeans, this is not always the best book and it's really my main criticism that I have of the story, how those people are depicted, um, how they are very often depicted from an outside view and yeah I just wanted to have that mention and just be aware of that, be aware of that going in. Aside from that something that I personally don't mind that much but that I have heard people um, complain about is that this is very much modeled after our world so you sometimes have just random words uh, that sound like other languages but that aren't those languages and that don't really make sense in those other languages. Uh, it's mostly European languages though uh, and also just generally the cultures and the countries. It's just it's just very much modeled after our world and if that's something that isn't necessarily up your alley as I said, be aware of that. I don't really mind that because I still found the politics in this book to be really interesting uh, and the focus very much is more on the politics rather than on the cultural world building aspects of it. So I didn't mind it that much but also the religions, you very much have Judaism, you have Christianity, you have kind of pseudo-Christianity. Actually kind of Christianity takes the role within this book that Judaism has within our world in that it's like the original um, religion that then the main religion in this world you know just kind of built upon. <laughs> um, so yeah that's also some things there uh, if that's not something that you enjoy you might be bothered by that in this book. But aside from that let's now talk about the positives. First of all, I really love the writing in this book. This book does something that I don't find in a lot of books. The only other book I can think of that does something similar is uh, the Fitz and, not the Fitz and the Fool, the Farsia trilogy, The Realms of the Elderlings. Um, it's high fantasy, it's epic high fantasy, it's also sometimes very political fantasy. However, it is still written in the first person perspective. The Goblin Emperor also kind of does something similar but it failed at the same thing for me because first of all I didn't like the writing style in The Goblin Emperor. I really liked the writing style in The Realms of the Elderlings. I just didn't like the characters in The Realms of the Elderlings and I really liked the writing style in the Kushiel Start series and it manages to be an intensely political high fantasy which The Realms of the Elderlings is a bit less so to be honest um, but the Goblin Emperor tries to be. It manages to be an intensely political fantasy while still relying on only one perspective. And that's hard to do because political fantasy kind of is based on the fact that you have a lot of very different factions and you need to know the motivations of all the factions and you need to be introduced to all the factions and how they interact with each other and who they are and so on. And that's kind of hard to do if you only have one perspective. However, this book does it. It absolutely does it and it does it beautifully. It can be very confusing but I think that's mostly down to the fact that it's political fantasy and political fantasy has a lot of names. It often has a lot of very similar names and you just often have to take your time, you know, to know who is who because Sometimes you just don't know the entire first book and that's how it is. That That's just how it is. Uh, to be honest, I uh, was once again very confused this time, although I did get more of who was who this time compared to the first time, because the first time when I read it, I read all three books in like five days. I read the first and the second book in one day each and they each have about seven to eight hundred pages, so you know. There wasn't a lot of time to remember the names, let's put it like that. I also love 
the characters. I love the characters and their relationships so much. I love Fedra as a character. She is so interesting. She is so strong and she's just something that you don't see a lot of in fantasy. She is a character who is strong but who can't fight. Uh, she can maybe defend herself a little bit but generally speaking Speaking, she can't fight and she has this thing and that's also where a lot of her character development comes from she has this kind of quote-unquote curse where she feels all pain as pleasure um, she's basically the perfect masochist the perfect submissive and the way that is dealt with within the book is just beautifully done. I'll get to that in terms of sensuality and the sex in this book generally, but the way it is done is just beautifully because it's not done in a very voyeuristic way. It's just made very clear within the book when she is being a masochist of her own choice, quote unquote, when she is using her curse or her gift to get to information but also when agency is taken away from her and she has to deal with that. It's not that just because she, you know, th there are instances where, by the way, trigger warnings for the series for rape, there are instances in the series where she is raped and just because she experiences pleasure through the rape because she can't help but feel pleasure because that's just her curse. She has to find sexual pleasure in pain. Just because that's the case doesn't make it any less rape and that's made very very clear. A lot of times there are sex scenes where you know on a surface level they are a lot more gentle than some of the other scenes where she has chosen to engage in sexual acts with people. However it is made very clear that some of those scenes are from her choice and other scenes aren't. Uh, and I just find her so interesting as a character because of that because it just you know it just gives so much room to growth because she has to come to terms with who she is um, and what she is and what she can do because of that she a lot of times has to defend herself to others um, why she does what she, what she does and why it's not something bad she has troubles in her relationships because of that uh, which by the way the romances in this book are also just so beautiful i love them so much i love the main romance in the series so much because it is truly that romance where the man just worships the ground that Phaedra walks on it's it's so gorgeous it's so beautiful i absolutely love it i love it so 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 much i love it it is perfection and they do have troubles in their relationships a lot of times but generally speaking that is the vibe then i also love the relationship which she has with the main villain which by the way may i remind you this is a book written in 2001 or published in 2001 the main antagonistic relationship is between two women who have an intensely homoerotic relationship that isn't just, you know, subtext homoerotic, but that, that, you know, that, that takes the next step and it's gorgeous and I love it and it's beautiful. And once again, it's just such a very troubled relationship because the villain is kind of the perfect counterpart to who Fidra is, at least in terms of sexuality um but also in terms of personality and so on and they just they have they have such an intense relationship and it's beautiful and i love it so much anyway fedra is an amazing amazing character i love her so much all the other characters are amazing as well but especially fedra is such a great character and now getting back to the sensuality and sexuality thing this series <sighs> I wouldn't say or I don't want to say gets a bad rap as being fantasy erotica or whatever because if you want to read fantasy erotica read fantasy erotica and whatever floats your boat however I wouldn't even say this is fantasy erotica yes there are a few sexual scenes in each 
book. They hardly are ever all that long though. And also each book is like 900 pages. So the majority of each book still is political stuff. And I think the reason why a lot of people see it as being very sexual is because yes, there is just a general vibe of a lot of sensuality in this book in how the characters move and how the characters interact. And for me, it's just this thing where usually in fantasy books, especially in modern fantasy books, you just have the general vibe of brutality and of blood and gore and everything is stark and everything is brutal. And you still have a lot of brutality in the series, but the general vibe, the thing that you get isn't the brutality, but it's the sensuality, it's this beauty. And for some reason, it just isn't as accepted within fantasy and it's just made fun of or whatever, or is ridiculed. And I just don't agree with that because I think it's beautiful. This series normalizes being sexual and being a sexual being. Also sometimes not being a sexual being, but very rarely. Also within this world, everyone is bi. Not this world, but within this country, like <laughs> canonically pretty much everyone is bi because people don't really care about the gender of the other person. It's more like, you know, you vibe with me, I find you beautiful, so let's go find a bedroom. It's it's not like that generally, but you know, it, it's more about the beauty of the person rather than what the other person's gender is. And I just find that beautiful. So I think that was actually all I wanted to say about <laughs> this book series. I've talked for long enough once again already. So if you haven't read the series and you now want to read it, tell me in the comments down below. If you have read it, tell me your thoughts on it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where one I'll have fantasy book written by a woman or gender queer person per month, will be left linked down below. So go and check those out as well. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye.